In this video, we're going to be discussing the modified clinical test of sensory interaction on balance, which for obvious reasons is shortened to modified CAT-SIB. We're going to be discussing how you perform the test with demonstrations and also how you interpret the results. The purpose of the modified CAT-SIB is to determine which sensory system is impaired and adversely affecting a patient's balance. Remember that the brain integrates information from three major systems to maintain balance. Number one is vision from the eyes, number two, vestibular information from the inner ear, and number three, proprioceptive information, sometimes grouped with somatic sensation. So vision, vestibular, and proprioception. The modified CATSID would typically be used in the geriatric population, those with neurological conditions that may have impaired cutaneous sensation, impaired proprioception, and also those with potential vestibulopathies like Meniere's disease or vestibular neuritis, etc. To conduct the modified CATSIB, the PT will instruct the patient to stand with their feet together, so a narrow base of support, and their arms by their sides. And this will be true of all four of these. And they will attempt to balance in that position for 30 seconds. We'll take a look at these individual conditions in just a minute. With each trial, you're going to begin timing it using a stopwatch. You will administer only one trial per condition if the patient is able to complete the first trial without a loss of balance, so they make it the full 30 seconds. So for condition one, if they make it the full 30 seconds, you don't have to do three trials. You would only do the first trial. Any trial is considered over when obviously they reach the full 30 seconds, or the participant opens his or her eyes in an eyes closed condition, raises their arms from their side to try to catch their balance, or loses balance totally and requires manual assistance to prevent falling. Okay? So let's take a look at each individual condition. This is condition one, where the eyes are open and you're on a firm surface. Preferably that firm surface should be wood, tile, concrete, something that's even, that's level, and hard. If you have to get by with this low-rise carpet, it's acceptable, but it's most valid when that surface is very firm. Okay. Now, if I got all 30 seconds on the first trial, I'm done with that condition, we'd move on to condition two. But let's say I only got 20 seconds on the first trial before I lost my balance. Then I would have to do two more trials. Even if trial two is 30 seconds, I'd still have to go to the third. So you either get 30 on the first trial and you're done, or you have to do all three trials. Now, in this condition, because I'm on a firm surface, I'm able to rely on somatic sensation uh, from the plantar surface of the feet and proprioception in the ankles. I'm going to rely on vestibular information, and my eyes are open, so I'm able to rely on vision. This is going to be the easiest of all three conditions. Condition two is where the eyes are closed, and you're standing on a firm surface. Because of the firm surface, you still have proprioception and somatic sensation. We haven't reduced vestibular information, so we still have that. But because the eyes are closed, we have eliminated visual information for balance. And so for that reason, the brain is only able to rely on vestibular information and proprioception. That makes condition two more difficult than condition one. And we'll see later on that if you struggle in condition two relative to condition one, that indicates reliance on visual input to maintain balance. And so you're not as effectively integrating vestibular and or proprioceptive information. Now for conditions three and four, it's no longer a firm surface. It has to be a compliant surface. And the most common compliant surface that's used is this foam pad. So condition three is where the eyes are open and you're standing on a foam surface. Now that foam surface is confusing the proprioceptive information that's going to the brain. So the brain throws out proprioceptive information because it's no longer reliable. So now the brain is only going to rely on visual input and vestibular input for balance. Okay? Condition four is the most difficult of these to balance in. So we're on the compliant surface here, the foam pad. So proprioceptive information is discarded by the brain. It's considered unreliable. Eyes are closed, so there's no visual input going to the brain. So the only balance information that the brain has to rely on is vestibular input. Now, as we mentioned before, failure in condition two, which is where the eyes are closed on a firm surface, indicates reliance on visual input to maintain balance. So the person is not effectively utilizing vestibular information and or they're not effectively utilizing proprioceptive information. So how do you treat that? You have the patient practice balance 
in a condition where they have to rely on vestibular information and or proprioceptive information. So you use a forced use approach. You force them to use vestibular, you force them to use proprioception, and with practice, they get better at integrating that information with and without vision, okay? Failure in conditions three and four, which is where you're on the foam surface, either eyes open or eyes closed, indicates that the patient relies on somatosensory or proprioceptive input to maintain their balance, and that the visual and or vestibular system is not being used and likely compromised. Again, how do you treat that? Well, it depends on which system is compromised. Is it visual or vestibular system? For visual, you basically just do some kind of an eye exam. Okay. Maybe the patient has horrible vision and they don't have any kind of corrective lenses or contacts. Okay. That's a simple fix. Um, or they have diplopia, double vision, something going on with vision. You can certainly screen for that and or uh, refer them out to the appropriate practitioner. If the vestibular system is compromised, again, you need to force them to use vestibular information. Again, practice balance exercises that force the use of the vestibular system. And this is not a cognitive dual task, so make sure there's not a lot of distractions going on in the room while they're trying to maintain balance. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.